What is Unicode? What can it do? What does it do for you? And how can you work with it as a software developer? Today, we'll look at this. We'll look a little bit at the history of Unicode. We'll look at how it works. And we also look at some best practices that you can follow when you work with Unicode as a software developer. Let's get started with some history. One of the first standards in computing, so to speak, in terms of character representation was ASCII. It has been around for a very long time. It started in 1963 and um, it's a very small character set. It's a 7-bit character set, meaning that it can represent 128 characters. Of those, only 95 are printable. And as you can imagine, since all of this started in English-speaking countries, it was very much centered around the English language. So representation of characters was kind of limited to characters in English-speaking countries. And this already, for example, didn't work well for countries such as Germany, where I'm from, where we have some special characters such as the umlauts. Now this gave rise to something called ISO 8859, which is a standard for character representation. It also has been around for quite a while, since 1987. It's an 8-bit character set, meaning that it can represent 256 characters. And of those, the first 127 always are ASCII. And since you now only have 127 characters where you can add new characters, what ISO 8859 did was to add a whole bunch of variants. And these have consecutive numbers, the one that I'm familiar with because that's representing German special characters is ISO 8859-1, which has special characters, for example, for German, but also for Nordic languages and for, for French and some other languages that have special accented characters. The disadvantage of ISO 8859 always was that you have to switch between these variants when you want to represent a wider range of languages and you cannot combine all the characters because you have to choose which variant, variant you're using. All of this at some point led to the creation of Unicode, which has been around since 1991. Unicode takes a really different approach. It creates a much bigger model of how many characters you can represent in Unicode. These are 1.1 million characters, a lot. And of those, right now, in the latest version of Unicode, around 150,000 characters are actually assigned. And characters in that case is a little loosely defined. So, for example, the emoji that you know from your phones and other places where people are using them, these are part of Unicode as well. Unicode is constantly evolving. For example, Unicode 15, which was published in September 2022, added four and a half thousand new characters. It added these characters as part of two new scripts, bringing the total number of supported scripts in Unicode to 161. So a lot of different scripts now can be represented in Unicode. And it also added some new emoji, for example, the ones that I'm showing here. For example, now you have an emoji for a landing airplane, which did not exist in Unicode prior to version 15. Unicode has this big character repertoire of potentially 1.1 million characters, meaning that you definitely cannot encode Unicode in one character in a byte. And because Unicode is a little bit more complex, there are different encodings, actually. There are very naive ones. One is called UTF-32, which encodes each character in four bytes. And then there are some which are a little bit more complex, but also more efficient, called UTF-16 and UTF-8. If you want to learn more about those encodings, please check out my video where I just talk about those encodings and explain a little bit how those work. As a software developer, you don't really need to know precisely how these encodings work. You just have to be aware of the fact that they exist. And when you read Unicode files, then your development environment always will give you some support and it will use some heuristics and some algorithms to figure out 
which encoding is being used in a file and then it will do the decoding for you and will hand you the file in your software application as a set of characters that you can work with without having to care about how they were encoded in a file or uh, across a network. Same is true for writing. If you want to write Unicode, you have to choose which encoding you want to use. And I would suggest that you always choose either UTF-8 or UTF-16 because also these are the two encodings that every software implementing Unicode must support. And I also would suggest that you never ever use UTF-32 because, uh, because it's very wasteful in terms of how much space it takes up. It's not supported everywhere and there really is no reason why you would want to use it. So in summary, when we look at Unicode, it really solves most character representation problems that we have today. It gives us a very big character repertoire. It is continuously updated, meaning that new scripts are added, new emoji are added, and that is a good way to always keep up with the changing needs of people. It is a process that you probably can follow if you're interested. You will also see then those new versions being supported in new versions of your operating system, such as macOS or Windows or iOS or whatever uh, development platform you're using. And because Unicode is more complex, it does use different encodings. And it's good, I think, as a software developer to be aware of these encodings, but you really don't have to care how exactly they work because you will always have software in, in your um, development environment that will take care of that, that will help you to either read or write Unicode files. And that's it. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And with that, we're done for today. All the best and see you next time. Bye bye.